While on a walking holiday in Nepal in 2008, someone mentioned having been to Bhutan. I have to admit, I hadn't heard of the country and had to ask where it was. Since then, I've been intrigued and it went on the list of places to visit. Each year, I go to the Destinations Travel Show in London. On my visit there in 2015, there were many posters advertising Bhutan. So I knew there was a message there I couldn't ignore. Having made inquiries with a number of exhibitors, Panoramic Journeys had just what I wanted. A trip travelling right across the country, taking in all aspects of landscapes, wildlife, iconic sites, culture, walking and festivals. That was the Bhutanese epic trip. Finally, in 2018, I booked a three-week trip starting on the 20th of November through to the 9th of December 2019 from Paro in the west to Samdrup Jong Ka in the southeast. Prior to arriving in Bhutan from Kathmandu was the amazing sight of the Himalayas from the plain and my first view of Everest. The initial sight on arrival was the wonder of the beauty and style of the airport buildings in Paro. This was the beginning of the journey of discovery. And how's the archery going? Did you hit any target? It's not going very well at the moment. The target's too small. <laughs> Once I get my eye in. <laughs> the Bhutanese most critical measurement is that of the gross national happiness as opposed to the gross national product of every other country. This covers many aspects of life, from health, education, proper governance, ecology, and individual well-being, amongst other things. The aim being to ensure that everyone has access to what they need, rather than what they want, and with a balance between people and nature. One of the most obvious elements of the Bhutanese way of life is the religious devotion to Buddhism. There are temples, stupas and monasteries everywhere. Monks are regularly seen in towns and villages and locals pay constant respect and homage to Buddha. The country has a negative carbon footprint which is brought about by government policy that there will be a minimum of 60% tree cover and any cutting down of trees is tightly regulated. This also links into conservation and having that balance whereby nature and people can live happily side by side. There are 10 designated national parks all around the country and each is linked with a nature corridor to allow free movement of wildlife between them. During my journey from Paro across the country, I have travelled through some of the most beautiful landscapes, visited a large number of diverse monasteries, temples, villages, markets and cultural centres, walked in some remote mountains and visited the iconic Tiger's Nest amongst other places, and have experienced the fascination of the festivals in Mongar and Trashagan, including wearing the national dress to become fully absorbed into the festivities. Everywhere I have been, I have been made welcome by the locals who are both interesting and interested. 
With its philosophy on life and its way of democratic governance, Bhutan is a fine example of what can be achieved when everybody works together for the benefit of themselves, the country and the environment. A small country providing an example to the rest of the world. Thank you.